Today I'm going to show you how I selectively breed my quail. There are a number of reasons why you might want to selectively breed your quail. Uh, the most common one is probably weight. Uh, you like A lot of people like to have big birds. Uh, they produce bigger eggs and generally and um, they're better on the plate in terms of uh, just eating and I guess uh, less work in terms of number of birds you have to process. Um, so there, there is those factors. There's also selective breeding for just genetic um, variation in terms of colours. Uh, so a lot of people like having different colours for particular reasons. Some look nice, some sell better uh, when you're, if you're doing the marketing side of uh, selling your quail. And also just, uh, which is a really important thing, is when you're selectively breeding your quail, you're actually trying to select the healthy birds to keep those genetics going through the bloodline to generation to generation and eliminating the negative traits that you don't want to see um, in your birds in the future. So that's uh, a number of the common reasons. Uh, of late, I've been a bit lazy when it comes to selectively breeding my quail. I have been just doing it by feel and picking them up and going, I think this one's bigger. And then I've, I've made the mistake of um, going, I think I'll go with this color. And then I'm gonna do something with that color and separate it and breed it out. And then I don't do it and I ended up uh, I think overall my, my weight of my quail has dropped down. So I'm going to get back to really weighing every individual bird and then I'll use that as my um, go-to and then from there I'll select my colours if I want to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is weigh every bird today, uh, including the roosters. I've only got a few roosters, but I will be selectively keeping the biggest roosters and I'll selectively keep the biggest hens and I'll separate them out. I'll show you how I do that and yeah, we'll get started. So what I have here are the cloches, I call them, where I put covers, protection for the young plants in the garden. I'm going to throw the quail in here based on weight. So I've got three categories for the hens. I'll use this one that I use to cover the chicken feed. I'll use that for the roosters. There aren't too many of them. Uh, so I'll throw them under here by size. And then we'll make decisions once we've weighed them all. So I'm going to have some groupings. I'm going to label them. Uh, so. I'm going to have 350 grams, this is 350 plus, that'll be one, then I'll have um, 300 to 350, and then I will have less than 300. That's how I will categorise them. Just so I remember, I've got uh, 350, that'll be that one, and then I will put this 300 to 350. And the last one will be the less than 300s. They almost certainly will be culled. So before you start, you want to have an idea of how many birds you want to keep. I've decided I want to keep about 24 to 25. Uh, the reason for that is I want to uh, get enough eggs uh, to keep uh, an incubation process going. And it's about enough that I can eat when I'm not incubating. Uh, and it's also uh, enough that I can manage all the feeds. You've got to, if you've got a lot of birds, there's a lot of hassle trying to feed them all the time. Uh, so there's that to worry about. Uh, so I've got that locked in. It's at about 24, which I, I do a 5 to 1. So that will be um, about 4 roosters to about 20 hens. So that's what I'm looking at. And that's the starting point. Now it's about doing all the effort. I've got to go weigh them. It's going to take a bit of time because there's so many. Because I've got two batches that have come through at the same sort of time. One's a couple of weeks older. But they're old enough to be weighed simultaneously. That's what I'm going to do, weigh them together and then keep the big ones, keep a few of the special colour ones that I want to keep and the rest I'll deal with later. So I got the first hen. And this is what I'm just going to do and I will record this. So that's a rounding to 369, 370. So I got a 370. So the 370 will go in here. This is one of the bigger ones. I think that was likely to be kept. I'll just sit that, that hen in there for now and we'll sort it out later. So we've got 253 just over the banner. Lucky bird just made it over the threshold. It gets to stay in the, the big cage. This big rosetta was 407, so breaking 400 is good. This uh, white bird, that's like a panda really, um, is 319, so into the other cage. I keep a record as I'm going, and I write the weight 
and then to just, just describe the color variation so it's easy for me to identify that's where we're at the moment we've got none that are really small yet uh, sort of half and half with the bigs and mediums uh, I've removed I haven't done the roosters yet but you can hear they're starting to sound a crow a lot because I've removed all their hens so they're upset <laughs> uh, but yeah I'll keep going I've got a lot more to still to do one thing to remember as you're going through this uh, selective breeding process is your first port of call in terms of culling should be to get rid of any birds that have any psychological problems. Uh, you might get ones that are just overly aggressive and you don't want them in the cage because they'll just hurt the other birds and you don't want that aggressive trait to be passed down the line through the next generations. Uh, the other is sometimes you get these roosters that just uh, crow incessantly and they're just really annoying so <laughs> that's the next thing I, I just think something's gone wrong with their head and they'll just crow all day long uh, we get a few like that um, once in a while so they get they get uh, culled as well so they're the first few things I'd do to eliminate uh, then after that uh, the next one is injured birds so when you've got a bird that's injured they may be able to still go along get through their life and you know but the quality of life's a bit lower they, they might be just hopping from the food to the water and that's the extent of their day being able to get from one to the other uh, and the problem with the injured birds is particularly the hens they will just get uh, mated non-stop all day because they can't really move away so that if the roost there's a lot of roosters around they'll just focus on that one hen because it's just she's easy um, <laughs> so there's that to consider if it's a rooster that's injured probably can't mate probably can't get on top of the hen so really they're no good, those roosters, and what is the purpose of them. Uh, so really the injured birds, something to consider is your next, uh, your second step, second cull point. Uh, some injuries might heal, so if they're with the wings, I don't worry too much, the wings don't really matter for the quail. It's if they're serious around the legs, um, then, then you've got a problem, and it probably will just get worse. Particularly on the hens, which are a fatter bird, if there's something going wrong with the legs, it generally just deteriorates over time. You might get a bit, if you want to keep them around because you really like that hen, uh, it's okay to keep them just to get a few eggs from them, fertilise eggs, and then maybe get rid of them after you do a couple of batches and then move on from there. Alright, now I'm going to start weighing the other cage. You can see this bird is injured. Uh, so that one, unfortunately, is not going to be carried through. Even though it's a big hen, it's just not worth keeping around. First one for the under 300s was 276. I have another injured bird. Something wrong with its legs. So that one will get culled. So I finished my weighing. Uh, I had a lot more of the bigger birds than I thought. So I had 29 that were 350 plus. Uh, 13 between 300 and 350 and only 2 below 300 so what I probably should have done is a 400 and above uh, just to separate those out so these are just hens too by the way so what I need to do is go through the 29 that are 350 and above probably take out the smallest ones and then I might make a decision on those in the 350 300 350 whether there's any colors that I want to keep and then I'll substitute them out because if they're only like 20 grams difference between a 355 and a 335 that is a nice color I'll probably just it's only a couple I'll swap them out uh, so that's the process I'm going to do now and then when I've uh, finished that so what I'm going to have is I've got my two cages I'm going to have my big colony cage I'm going to have the birds that I'm going to use for the breeding program the going forward and everything I put in the small cage will be eventually culled out uh, so that's what I'm going to do I've just got to weigh a couple of roosters I've got six roosters I'm probably only going to keep five maybe four actually yeah, I think I'll keep four uh, I normally go I just don't think they're that big I normally go four uh, sorry one to five so I go one rooster to five tens uh, and then I pull my colony cage then I go plus one I just add an extra one for insurance in case one of the roosters is not mating or gets injured and dies then I've got something another one there in reserve uh, but I think the it's pretty clear which ones are the biggest I had to add an extra cage for the 350s and above. There were just too many, they are getting a bit crowded. So I need to cull a few of them. And then out of the 300 to 350s, I'll probably see if there's, I might keep one of the whites because I just don't have any of the big ones. So I might keep one of those. Um, and then I've got a couple of really small ones, which I'm not gonna keep. 
That one's a cool colour, but it's just tiny. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I decided to keep this oddly coloured one. This, um, I just think it's kind of unique. If you can see it. It's, it's a bit underweight, but um, maybe it'll fatten up. But, yeah, it's just the colours, just something different. It's kind of a cross. A lot of my birds are crossed, but this one's come out. Yes, a bit different. So I'll keep that. It's just one of the other little variables that you can throw into the mix. They're all weighed now and I've separated them into two cages. One I'll deal with and the other one is the colony cage which I'll keep. And I'll let them sit there for about a week before I start collecting eggs for the next incubation. I just want them to breed and yeah, get those genetics working through. Uh, they're a little bit disturbed at the moment. That was a bit stressful for them. Uh, so they'll settle down today. Uh, they might stop laying for a little day or so. So I'll just let them calm down and then we'll get back to normal. Uh, the process takes a long time, this weighing. It's better to have two people doing it, one to weigh and the other to record. And then if you get the thresholds, the bands, um, if you get more and more bands, it means the first time you weigh, if you had 380 to 400, it'd be better for me um, at this point. It'd be quicker because then you have to re-weigh when you get to the decision point where you have to make some more hard decisions. Uh, so hopefully with this process, if I keep following it, so we've got a bit lack there, if I keep following it, the weight will start to increase. So we'll see how it goes and hopefully yeah, the weights increase and that's uh, selective breeding. To be culled. And the colony. The lucky ones.